Hi, my name is Brian Rehm. I'm a senior technical content developer here at Udacity, and today we're gonna talk all about SQL. Today's world is actually all about AI. How do I sell faster? Understand my customer better? Let me drive my car by itself? Find the best deal right now, anywhere in the world? Well, all of the answers to these questions require an immense amount of data. In fact, according to recent calculations, we have around 149 zettabytes of data. Yeah, I know, I didn't know what a zettabyte was either, but to put it into perspective, imagine a grain of sand as one byte. Now imagine we lined up grains of sand in a row. 149 zettabytes would be enough grains of sand to create a ring, not around the Earth, but around the entire solar system, extending beyond the ring of Pluto. Now that's a lot of data. As you can imagine, in order to manage data like this, we need a powerful tool to explore and manipulate it. Well, that's SQL, or Structured Query Language. This is a powerful tool that lets you examine databases, tables, filter out noise, and uncover valuable insights to drive smarter business decisions. Think of SQL as your tool to ask your data precise questions and receive instant, accurate answers. Want to know which products are the most profitable? SQL can tell you. Need to identify your most valuable customers? SQL has the answers. By mastering this powerful language, you'll gain a deeper understanding of your business, identify new opportunities, and make data-driven decisions that can propel your company to new heights. Now that you know a little bit about what SQL is, Let's pop on over to the query tool and take a look at how it works. All right, welcome to our database. Now, in this tutorial, I'll be using a tool called PG Admin to run our SQL queries. However, the tool really isn't all that important, so don't focus on the tool, rather focus on the statements that we will be writing. So to start off with, we need to understand what our database is. And our database is just a collection of tables. Now, if you scroll down, you'll notice here that this database is a collection of 15 different tables. Now, each one of these tables is going to consist of rows and columns of data. But what's in the table? That's where SQL comes in. Let's say that we're interested in this country table here and we wanna see what's in there. We'll start off by writing a very simple query. We'll say select star, which means select everything, from country. Now I'll pause before running this. When you are writing SQL statements, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you capitalize all of your SQL keywords. That's really gonna help you to separate your SQL keywords from non-SQL keywords. So we'll go ahead and execute this, and you'll see that now we have a view of our table. Now we got kind of lucky here because there's only 109 rows. However, when you're working with a large production database, there might not be 100 rows, there might be 100,000 or 100 million rows. And in those kinds of cases, you might really get stuck with a long running SQL query. So when we first start looking at a database, we generally wanna say limit 20 or limit 100, some sort of limit. We'll run that, and now you can see that we've limited this to only 20 rows. Starting to look a little better already. When we very first look at our table, what we're interested in is what are the columns, what are the rows, and what's the formatting. So is country by ID? Is it by name? Is it something else? Is our formatting the same, and is it correct? Do we have null or empty fields or errors in our database. And so typically this is what we're looking at when we first look at a table. Now, if we already know all that stuff, we might be interested in some other interesting information. For instance, let's say that we wanted the last country ID, which is probably the last one that was entered into the system. So in that case, let's go ahead and say order by country ID descending. So we're gonna look at this country ID, but we're gonna look at it descending. We'll hit the button there, and now you can see that this is descending. However, when we look at a table, oftentimes you'll have tons of columns, and we really only care about the country ID in this case. So let's go ahead and take this star and change it to country ID. What do you think is gonna happen here? If you said 
all the columns will drop off except for this column, then you would be correct. You can see now that we're looking at country ID and we're looking at it by descending values. So already we're starting to get a good feel for what's in our database and specifically in our country table. And we're starting to get a feel for some of the statements that we can write in SQL. We'll go ahead and do one more. Let's go back to our select all so we can see everything and we'll get rid of the order by. So now we can see our whole table. And let's say now that we're only interested in rows that have the country as United States. In order to do that, we would simply add a second line where country is equal to United States. We'll run that. And now you can see that we have only one row that actually has the country as United States. What do you think would happen if we have something like this? We have an error in our statement. Nothing at all appears. So if we have an error, nothing at all appears. Now what if I happen to leave off one of these apostrophes? You'll see now that we get an error statement. It's saying undetermined quoted string at or near United States. So you can see here, it's pointing out that we have an apostrophe there and we have an error. So we can look at that and say quoted string, there's an apostrophe, ah, we're missing our apostrophe. So it does kind of help you if you make an error to figure out what it is you're doing and where the error is occurring. Welcome back. As you can see, SQL is an incredibly powerful tool that you can use to analyze your data to answer questions quickly. It's not just a tool for querying data though. It can also join tables together, help in cleaning up your data and transform it to unlock new business insights. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Oh, and don't forget to smash that notification bell so you don't miss any of our content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.